Okay, let's try to think about A. What's f of negative 1? You have a piecewise function like this, and you have two formulas to work with, right? Should I evaluate negative 1 on the first one or the second one? The first one, why? Because this means x is negative 1. Is negative 1 less or equal to negative 1? Yes, yes correct. <laughs> Is negative one bigger than negative one? No. Incorrect. So uh, among these two conditions, only the top one satisfies x equals to negative one. So this is the formula that you have to use in order to calculate. So you have negative one plus two, which is positive one. All right, f of one would be what? Which one do I use? Is one less or equal to negative one? No. Is one bigger than negative one? Yes. Yes. So what do you do? Negative three times one minus two, which is negative five. Okay, and the question was asking us to add the two numbers. So this is one plus negative five, which is negative four. Second question, find x and y intercepts. Okay, we've done this many times. X intercept, you set y equal to zero. So in other words, I want to know when x plus two is equal to zero, when this is zero, or when negative three x minus two is equal to zero. Okay, first this one, what do you get? You get x equals to negative two. I mean, sorry. No, x, 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 x equals. This one has, but uh, you add two of both sides, and negative three x is positive two, and then divide by negative three, so you get negative two thirds. Now, what you have to be careful is, although, okay, uh, let's step back and think about what this means. This means, this calculation means that if you plug in negative two into the function, what will you get for y value? If you plugged in negative two into the x, what would you get for the y value? Zero. Zero, right? But what you have to be careful is, when you plug in negative two, does that actually get plugged into the first one? What if it gets plugged into the second one? Then it doesn't give you zero. So you have to check whether this negative two does satisfy this condition so that it does get cor correctly plugged into the first one. Is that true? Is negative two less than equal to negative one? That's true, right? Yeah. So this does satisfy this, so this is indeed an x-intercept. That's good, okay. What about this? Negative two-thirds. If you plugged in negative two-thirds in here, it gives you zero. Is negative two-thirds bigger than negative one? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's true. It is bigger than negative one. So here, this Because will you owe more. No, no, no. Negative two thirds and negative one. This this is bigger. Oh, okay. Well, you know, two thirds is less than one, right? Yeah. So if you multiply negative one both sides, this is bigger. Yeah. You know that multiplying negative, you you flip, right? Or well, number wise. Or or number wise, this is point six six. So it's like owing sixty six cents. This is like owing a dollar. So it's better to owe sixty six cents than a dollar. So this, this is bigger, okay? All right, so we got the two x-intercepts that way. Let me just write down the results. So the x-intercepts are uh, negative two comma zero and negative two thirds comma zero. Okay, how about the y-intercept? Okay, set x to zero. Should I plug zero in here or here? The first one or second one? Oh, second one, because zero is indeed bigger than negative one, right? Zero is not less than negative one, but zero is bigger than negative one. So uh, y would be f of zero. You plug in zero into x, but that gets plugged into the second one. So it's negative three times zero minus two, that's negative two. So that's the y-intercept. Y-intercept is zero comma negative. Okay. 
Now, how do you sketch a piecewise function? Let's do this. Let's try to sketch this, sketch this separately, and then try to put them together and see what happens. All right. So first, I'm going to use a blue marker to sketch the first one, y equals to x plus 2. Let's think about y equals to x plus 2. Uh, we already know that at negative 2, it has an x-intercept. If you plug in 0, you get positive 2. So these are the x and y-intercepts of this, this line, so it should be this graph. That's this graph. On the other hand, if you have y equals to negative 3x minus 2, the y-intercept is 0 comma negative 2. Good. The x-intercept is, uh, we just calculated here, uh, it, it gives you this. So negative 2 thirds is somewhere here. And uh, since I know that it's a line equation, I just connect it as a straight line. So that's what you get. Uh, however, this is not the graph of the function because the function follows this graph only until negative 1. So if you plug in negative 1, here's, here's negative 1. If you plug in negative 1 in here, you get positive 1. So here's like 1 comma negative 1. So only up till here it's valid graph after negative 1 is invalid, it's here. Okay. And then for negative 2, if you plugged in negative 1 in here, you get positive 1 also, right? Yeah. So you would get positive 1. So they, they meet at that point. So the resulting graph is this graph. And they meet at this point because they give you the same value when you plug it in negative 1. So this, this graph, this thing, that looks like an upside-down V, that's the graph of the function. 